First, uh, John has agreed to reminisce for a while. Then we will hear it from everybody else. Um, I guess we have to click on the next. Okay. Well, my reminiscence is going to be a very specific one. Uh, is, so to speak, why sale and not something else? Uh, <coughs> I was interested in making a point and my attempt to make us what might be considered to be a, a small and definite point grew into creating uh, a substantial organization, namely SAIL. <clears throat> and the point had to do with what is a um, concept. And there was a book uh, by uh, Bruner, Goodnow, and Austin uh, called uh, Concept Recognition or something like that. But the uh, important thing about the book was its notion of concept, which was a Boolean combination of elementary concepts. That is, uh, a concept uh, could be uh, an A and a B and a not C. And the examples that were given was that uh, the, uh, well, I don't remember any of the, the precise examples, except that they were tended to be letters of the alphabet, <laughs> which were a vertical line and a horizontal line and a curve, uh, where elementary concepts were vertical line, horizontal line, and curve. And so this letter had, uh, it did have a, a vertical line, a horizontal line, and so forth. And um, I said, well, that's not good enough. Because with that uh, vocabulary, while you could recognize uh, the different letters of the alphabet, from a uh, limited vocabulary, it would not permit you to draw uh, a letter that you didn't know about. Uh, so I introduced the, the slogan, description and not merely discrimination. And that was said that a concept would be something like uh, a vertical line connected at its middle to a horizontal line segment going to the right, and a combination of that kind. And if you allow that vocabulary, then you can actually, uh, by telling someone that over the telephone, he can draw the object of that given kind. So, and furthermore, can recognize objects that of, a new, of new kinds that he hasn't heard that way. For example, he can recognize uh, objects and of new kinds. And in trying to do that, then he can recognize objects seen by television cameras. And well, to demonstrate that, you need television cameras uh, and, and so forth. And uh, this suggested connecting television cameras to computers and having suitable programs to do something like that. And it suggested asking DARPA for money to um, build a laboratory in which one could do that. And uh, DARPA uh, liked that idea. Uh, and um, gave us the money. Uh, now, there were other things that were involved, but um, that was uh, part of the reason 
why we asked for the money to start the Stanford AI lab, and part of the reason why uh, DARPA gave us the money. Now, if somebody wanted to write a proper history uh, of the matter, then they would look at the ancient proposal, and uh, that would be hard to find. Uh, Stanford doesn't have any policy of keeping proposals uh, that were funded. And they have an explicit policy at some point of throwing away and destroying proposals that were not funded. Uh, <coughs> Uh, and uh, the various government agencies have no policy. They have a policy. They destroy proposals whenever the office moves <laughs> <laughs> from one building to another. But we've still got them in the archives. Uh, maybe, if, they, uh, if the building that holds the archives moves. Uh, <laughs> Uh, maybe you have some of them. Uh, uh, but anybody who wants to write a history of any branch of science would like a history of the proposals uh, as to uh, what the investigators hope to accomplish and what the government hoped to accomplish um, in, in funding them. And I remember uh, there's reading a book called The Question of AI, which treated these questions by inventing what the investigators hoped to accomplish <laughs> uh, and what the government hoped to accomplish. And it was pure invention, uh, namely, the people who wrote the various chapters of this book were leftists, and uh, they invented from a leftist point of view uh, what these people must have been, uh, must have had in mind. Um, okay, someday uh, some proper histories of, um, of what the various proposals will be in, in these areas will be made. I think in um, certain kinds of sciences like physics, uh, histories will be, are already uh, much better than in areas like computer science or um, artificial intelligence, or best of all in an area like astronomy that have enormous continuity, uh, where there's a certain continuity between what people were trying to do a hundred years ago and what they're trying to do today. But there certainly isn't such a continuity in uh, anything like uh, artificial intelligence. End of reminiscence. Why are us computer people so bad at keeping records of what we want? But when our job is to is to store records and <laughs> file knowledge. <laughs> well, it's it's not our function to write the history of AI any more than it's the physicist's uh, function to write the history of physics. Uh, there are people who specialize in writing the history of physics. And there are people who specialize in writing the history of um, AI. It's just that they're uh, not very good. <laughs> okay. uh, we can have more. This was an enormous amount of work on Bruce's part. And for example, uh, the MIT AI lab has not managed to do anything like that.
Now, uh, Tuff has been completely superseded by Tech. Uh, and Tech uh, produces much more elegant output. But in one respect, uh, Tech is a substantial backward step from Pub. <laughs> And that is, um, Don Knuth said he didn't want a programming language. And uh, what he ended up, he wanted something simple that uh, secretaries would be able to do. <laughs> and he invented something very simple, but it ended up being elaborated into an extremely bad programming language, <laughs> uh, namely uh, Tech Macros. Uh, and, uh, and while Knuth is almost always extremely elegant, he wasn't in this case. Well, wasn't very elegant either. <laughs> well, but the but structure think, think of alcohol, structure that tech had for combining things relative to what tech has ended up with is, uh, is it seems to me, is very elegant. By thousands and thousands yeah. of people. Yes. It uses uh, the ASCII character set. That really helps. <laughs> it says tech is still is in use by thousands and thousands of people. What do you have to say to that? Well, what? no merit. Uh, that is, uh, it, uh, certainly tech has produced more, produces more beautiful output than uh, pub does. And if you had combined some of the ideas of both of them, uh, it, it, it would have been better than either. Yeah, yeah. Get to the Don needs to say <laughs> something now. Don needs to say something now. No, Don Knuth is going to say it. Uh, his rebuttal to your rebuttal. I think you want to record it. No, this isn't a rebuttal. You can't argue aesthetics. Uh, but, uh, but, but I think the best answer is maybe because of a conversation I had with Leland Smith a few minutes ago, and, and I had just um, uh, I had occasion to typeset some music, and so, and, and so, in, it, so it turned out that I, I used Metapost in order to typeset music, and he said, yeah, if he had a theorem, uh, a paper about mathematics, he would use score to typeset the mathematics. <laughs>